it's Genevieve with Eco Collective here to teach you how to do zero waste grocery shopping and how to shop in bulk. First things first, you've got to decide where to do your grocery shopping. Today I'm here in Ballard Market, which is my personal favorite because they have a huge bulk section um, and they're just a great local grocery store. Here in Seattle, some of our favorites for shopping in bulk and avoiding plastic are going to be PCC, Whole Foods, and Central Co-op. There's a few others in the area too that have a good selection. Um, and if you're not in Seattle, the best way to find a zero waste grocery store or a grocery store with a bulk section is to go on the Zero Waste Home app. Faye Johnson has tons of contributors around the US that have added grocery stores in their local cities. Um, so it's a really easy way to find a bulk section near you. We are also gonna talk about how to avoid plastic when you don't have a bulk section. Now I'm gonna show you what's in my cart. So these are the things that I brought with me today to be able to bring things home plastic free. So first up, we've got our empty bulk food jars. This is my favorite brand for shopping in bulk, Le Parfait. Um, it's one that, it's just a great company. They have really good seals and when they wear out, they will replace them. Um, and yeah, they just have a lot of really great sizes for shopping in bulk. In a second, I'm gonna show you how to tear your jars or get the weight and how to label them. It's best if you bring empty food jars to the store, but if you still have a little bit of food in them, you can just get the weight with the food so that they can detract the weight of the container that you brought in. I also brought a glass bottle of milk that we have finished. I'm gonna drop it back off at the store for the company to refill and put back out on the shelf. And plus, I get my deposit back, so it's a win-win. There's also some liquid bulk options here, like olive oil and stuff like that. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. But um, because it can get really messy with small mouth jars, this time I also brought a funnel in my kit. There are many ways to shop in bulk. And if you don't wanna bring your containers to the store and lug around heavy glass jars, they can be a little bulky too. Um, you can also use produce bags for almost everything. Um, I've got a set here of mine. And in here, I've got everything from cotton bags for things like maybe flour, sugar, rice, small things. I've got mesh bags. They're great because you can see through them. I can put produce in here. I can put nuts, dried fruits, stuff like that. I also have some plastic ones that my boyfriend brought home and I am determined to reuse them. And then I also have a Sharpie for labeling my jars. So this is kind of a little kit that I always have and whenever I go grocery shopping, I'll just toss it in my bag. The best and easiest way to tear your jars and get the weight is to do it at the self-checkout. Uh, it's really easy and in the corner of the screen, at least on these ones, it will tell you the weight. So you put the jar on the scale and it's gonna show me mine weighs 1.3 pounds. Touch the start button to begin. So I'll take my Sharpie and just write it on there so that the cashier knows how much to detract. You might wanna check with the cashier because sometimes they weigh in pounds versus ounces, but I've been here a couple times and they tend to like pounds. This jar usually weighs exactly one pound, but today I've still got some flour in it, so I'm just gonna write down on my phone the tear weight just for today only. Um, it comes to 1.44. So that's how I do it if my jars aren't quite empty, but I still wanna refill. If you don't have self-checkout at your grocery store or you're a little bit unsure how to do it, you can always go to the cashier and they will weigh them for you. Um, most people are super friendly about it. Today I'm gonna fill up on some rice and I know about how much I need and then I'll transfer to the jar when I get home. If you're using cloth bags to either buy bulk foods or grab your produce, um, a lot of times on the label, they have the tear weight written on the back, which is so helpful. Um, otherwise, you can write it with like a grease pen or however you wanna go about it. Um, this is also a great option for if you're going somewhere like Fred Meyer. Um, they have a great new bulk section, but in the past, sometimes the cashiers aren't necessarily equipped to subtract the tear weight. They don't get bulk shoppers as often, someplace like that. 
Um, these bags are great because they're lightweight enough that it's kind of not that much bigger of a price difference if they can't subtract the tear weight. Same goes for if you're just reusing plastic bags. Um, they're super lightweight. It's not really going to matter if you subtract the tear. Um, so it's easy for places that aren't really used to that. So when you go to fill up on bulk, they have a number written on the bins that corresponds to what you're buying. So I'm getting California White Jasmine Rice. It's number 48330. And that tells the cashier what the price per pound is because it's different for everything. Um, you can write this number on your jar if you're using the same jar for rice every time, but I'm not that kind of person and I'm using cloth produce bags anyway. So I use these for everything as I refill my bulk. Um, so the easiest way for me is I actually just snap a picture of that number. And when I go through the checkout line, I'll just pull it up and I'll say, okay, that one's this number, that one's this number. And they're super patient. Um, and then you can just delete the photos and it's super easy, super zero waste. For buying liquids in bulk, I brought this funnel, especially because some of these spouts are huge. Like, I wanna fill this with honey. Um, I make a lot of like herbal tonics, oxymeals and stuff, and uh, so I'll just be refilling this with honey all summer, but it's not a great fit for the specific honey dispenser. So we do this and I fill up. Um, at the end, it's gonna be super sticky, um, so I brought a reused Ziploc to put it in. That was anticlimactic. Oh, there we go. <laughs> this is a very slow going process. Every time that I go grocery shopping, I get some kind of a snack. Usually it's a baguette um, to eat while I'm shopping. So I'll like check out with that first or give them the label. We're going to get some vegan gummies. Should we fill the bag? <laughs> I wouldn't complain. <laughs> so with zero waste grocery shopping, our top tip is to shop the perimeter of the grocery store. So stick with things like produce, um, oftentimes the meat and deli section can wrap in paper. Uh, and then if there's a prepared food section, they might have a salad bar or an olive bar. Um, and then the bulk section. When it comes to getting produce plastic free, my best advice is to just skip the plastic bag and put it right in the cart. You're probably gonna wash it when you get home anyway because people have been touching it, it's been in transport. Um, so, and then a lot of things come with natural packaging anyway. When I'm buying something smaller like garlic, ginger, small potatoes, um, I will grab a produce bag, a reusable produce bag, and if I'm not gonna invest in these, I might use a reused plastic bag, I might use a paper bag for the mushroom section. So depending on where you live, there's gonna be different options available to you. I used to buy these Tetra Pak. <laughs> I used to buy chicken broth in Tetra Packs because they're technically recyclable. But I learned over the last few years that cans are much more efficiently recycled. So a can like this, when you recycle it, it's gonna be back on the shelf in 30 to 60 days, which is awesome. Um, but something else really cool is if you get something like a better than bouillon, like a essentially a solid or dehydrated form, you're kind of shipping less weight because there's no water weight. So you've got to kind of weigh it for yourself and see what's important to you, what's available to you, and really kind of make your own choices. So if you don't have a lot of bulk options near you, canned foods are a great way to go. Um, but you also gotta think about things like, if you get a plastic bag of dried beans, there's less water weight, so it might be creating less carbon to ship it to you. So there's things like plastic film recycling. I mean, these things get really hazy. So again, you've gotta use your judgment. Um, but another great way is there's some online bulk stores now and you could share with your neighbors, you could get a big bucket, um, you could talk to local farms and co-ops. 
So I wanted to talk a little bit about choosing where your food comes from. Um, I personally am not vegan, but I try and do a lot of my meals plant-based as much as possible, but we still buy eggs. And I choose this brand because cage-free doesn't always mean that it's ethical. So these guys are pasture-raised, which means that they actually have enough space per chicken to thrive. Um, and I love chickens, and I think it's really important to think about the farms that your food are coming from. So there's a lot of different views on this, but my favorite way to get eggs is usually in the summer, I will get them from either my herbalist or a friend, um, straight from their happy chicken pets on the farm. I make some compromises because I think it's really important to use some plant-based alternatives, and this is a fantastic local company. Um, so this has plastic, but I would buy it anyway. Again, it all comes down to personal judgment and doing what you can. That one is white jasmine rice, 42434. 